everyone, I'm Andrea from NaturallySavvy.com and today I'm here with Frank Habercake, an environmental consultant and founder of SafeAir.ca. Hi Frank, welcome. Thanks, thanks for having me. Today we're going to talk about indoor air quality and the importance of it. So tell us a little bit about indoor air quality. Well, indoor air quality is very important because we spend about 90% of our time indoors. And uh, the World Health Organization and a couple other you know, government agencies have actually found that indoor air quality can be up to 10 times more polluted than the outside air in some industrialized cities. So that's a lot of pollution. Uh, plus, you've heard the saying, you are what you eat, you are also what you breathe. So if you have in your home or your office air quality issues, then you may have health issues from that and you'll never get better until you figure out what those are. Air quality pollution is a big problem and it does affect your health. So what are some ways that we're, I guess, encountering this pollution in our home? Well, there can be a variety of different reasons for it, from VOCs or chemicals coming off of paints, building materials, contents. There could be previous water damage that have led to mold growth or mold has been removed but not properly. Or they may not know that there's a mold issue. It may be hidden. Uh, there could be ventilation problems. There could be dust issues because of the mechanics of the house. So there's a whole number of reasons why there could be air quality problems. Right. So what are some of the issues or side effects that people can experience, let's say, if they have some of these issues in their home? Well, most clients that we speak to, by the time they call us, they have been to the doctor you know, many times, have taken medication, and it just doesn't seem to go away. Okay. That could be anything from respiratory issues, to allergic reactions, skin issues, uh, cold or flu-like symptoms that headaches, just don't seem to go away, headaches. Uh, unfortunately, there, there's a long laundry list of symptoms. It all depends on your health as well. And, and immune system mm -hmm. uh, and where your weak points are that is where definitely a mold issue will attack it so you can have a room full of people that have certain different allergies they all are going to react differently right so there's no one set symptom that could lead you to believe there's an air quality issue but if you're constantly just not feeling at your best right. or you smell something that shouldn't be there you should get it checked out how do you test for these issues tell us a little bit about your role and uh, and your equipment that you have on the table sure. Well, when we do an assessment, we do a combination of instruments and laboratory analysis. Uh, the instruments that we have is about $50,000 worth of industrial hygiene type equipment because we need to make sure that uh, whatever the instruments are registering, that they're actually registering that so they're calibrated. Um, so first, when we go through a building or a house or an office, uh, we start with the handheld equipment that gives us a little bit more of an indication of um, you know, how the building is behaving. Are there uh, humidity issues, dust issues, chemical issues, sewer gases, uh, is the house uh, not uh, ventilating or breathing properly? Uh, then we'll use a laser particle counter that gives us a breakdown of the particular dust in the air and gives us size ranges. So we know that the smaller sizes are, you can inhale those into your, uh, into your lungs a lot deeper than the larger sizes that would settle out over furniture. Um, we also would do laboratory analysis for mold. This is a, called a spore trap. Basically air flows through it, whatever's in the air as far as mold spores stick to a slide on the inside and in the lab they break it open, start identifying and counting mold spores and telling us what type or what okay. genus. We can also get more intricate and go into culturing them to get a little bit more of the species information on whether they have toxins or not that could be affecting your health. Uh, we can also do a detailed chemical analysis of the house to see exactly what are the chemicals that you're breathing in. Um, are they at uh, normal levels or not? And from that we can make specific recommendations as well. And we can go beyond that. We can do asbestos testing, lead paint testing. I mean, the, the, the list is very long. When I hear the word mold, I kind of shudder because I'm like, you know, we don't want that in our house. But how many different types of molds are there and are they all really dangerous for us? Well, there's 200,000 different types of molds out there. Uh, some you can eat, they're on cheese and bread and so forth. Um, and uh, others are used in biological warfare. So there are some good molds and some bad molds. Uh, and some that are in between, they're mildly allergenic. They don't all have to be toxic. But it's important to figure out what you have and at what concentration uh, so that we can make recommendations on what to do about it.
Typically, we'll go through every room in the house with the instruments, okay. uh, develop a plan on which rooms or maybe want all the rooms sampled for mold spores and, and VOCs for the lab, but that gets a little expensive. Okay. Uh, we also use thermal imaging, which is a special camera that can show us more about what's in the wall cavity as far as moisture problems. And that can detect problems. mold, I guess? Well, it detects moisture, which could lead to mold. Okay. Uh, we also use a mold detection dog, just like you know, a drug dog can find drugs, a mold dog wow. can find mold. Wow. So coupled with air samples, we'll know if he found a small area of mold, a large area that's producing spores, and whether it needs dealing with now, or you can wait a month or a year or whatever. So we give the homeowner a complete plan on what it is that needs to be done. Again, it's like a physical for your house. At the end, you get, a, you get a report that outlines these are the issues and this is how you address it so that you're not constantly getting sick if you're having health problems, which could be your house that's causing it. That. Maybe you can it's, explain what a VOC is. It's a volatile yeah. organic compound, but maybe you VOC can... stands for volatile organic compounds. Um, it's uh, basically chemicals, okay. uh, carbon-based chemicals. Um, you can get that from a number of items in your house, uh, toys, contents, paints, building materials. So that's uh, the off-gassing from the off items in the house. It's the off-gassing from the items in the house, which okay. can affect your health, especially if you are chemically sensitive. Okay. So it's a good, good methodology to figure out what are your chemicals and at what level, um, so that you can address that. It's really very interesting. So today we're going to take a walk through um, a house that has been recently renovated. Um, and fairly newer, they just moved in not too long ago, and uh, you can tell us, I guess, what you find, and then the ways that we could remedy the situation, some easy ways that we can remedy the situation, right. so that nobody's, nobody experiences any side effects. Yeah, and it doesn't always have to be an expensive uh, remedy. In some cases, it's very simple, and in some cases, it's a little bit more involved. Well, I'd love to hear that because, you know, it can make some people a little bit nervous, maybe, because if there's huge costs that are involved. So I love the simple tips. If we can um, suggest simple tips, that would be great. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people actually say, oh, we're actually afraid to have you here because we were afraid of what you might find. But uh, in a lot of cases, once we're done, they're pretty happy because in some cases it's a very small fix and you know what they were worried about wasn't really happening. Right. Uh, and in other cases where they're constantly sick uh, and don't know why, we found the reason for their ailments. So why would you not want to figure out what it is so that you can fix it? No, absolutely. Yeah. So great, let's take a walk okay. through the test. All right, good. perfect. Okay. <laughs> Frank, what are you using now? This is uh, thermal imaging. It uh, can show me if there's moisture in the walls or behind the walls that we can't see. And then whenever we see something of interest, we stick a moisture meter in it to see exactly what the uh, moisture content of the wall would be. So we're just scanning the walls here for moisture and uh, there's an area of interest right there. You can see the color change. Uh, it's also colder than some of the other surfaces. Moisture obviously is, uh, is colder, meaning materials uh, that are wet have a colder signature than materials that are dry. So we're just going to put a moisture meter in this area here. And yeah, sure enough, there's quite a bit of moisture uh, in that wall cavity. And that moisture can lead to mold, Frank? Well, that can certainly lead to mold on the back of the drywall. I don't see any mold right now. Uh, there's a little bit of visible water damage, but not much. Uh, we'll see when we bring the dog through whether he alerts here. Or, and if he does, then there is a mold growth issue, which we'll have to look at the lab results of the air to see how serious it is. Seek. Good boy. Come on, seek. How about here? Seek. How about there? Good boy. How about here? Seek. How about here? Seek. How about there? Seek. Good boy. Seek. Good boy. How about there? Seek. Oh, good boy. Very good boy. So he sits when he smells mold. He's sitting in this area where we have some water damage in the wall. Um, we'll have to look at the air results for mold spore activity. But if there is an elevation in mold spores, this is where the mold is hiding. Incredible. Good, good boy. boy, Ranger. This is a laser particle counter. It uh, counts the debris or dust in the air and gives me different size ranges. And we're going to be comparing it to other rooms and then to outside. So we're just going to do a spore trap here. Uh, this runs for five minutes. And so whatever is in the air as far as mold spores gets trapped in the spore trap. And we're also going to run the viable plates that will give a species of mold if there are any. Now we've done the walkthrough and 
you're able to take tests in every room of the house. So can you tell us a little bit about what we found, especially from you know, your instruments that you could tell us on the spot as opposed to the ones that we're going to do in the lab, which are the VOCs and the mold, right? Well, that's the nice thing about the handheld equipment. It gives us instant results and, and obviously the laboratory uh, samples, they take about a week to come back. But what we found already in this house is that there's a real ventilation problem. The carbon dioxide levels, not to be confused with carbon monoxide, but okay. carbon dioxide is basically what we exhale and we use it as a tracer gas to see if the house is exchanging air properly or ventilating properly. And it's not. It's about you know, anywhere from 1400 to 1600. It's jumping around a little bit as it normally would. Uh, anything over 1000 is considered air quality problems uh, or issues uh, can develop. And under 800 parts per million is where you want to be. So we've established that the house has an air exchange problem, which can be addressed with either frequently opening up the windows but in some cases when it's minus 20 outside or above 30 degrees uh, in the summertime or for the American viewers 80 to 90 Fahrenheit, it's tough to open up windows. So there are mechanical uh, solutions like air exchangers or HRVs or ERVs, which are basically mechanical lungs for the house uh, to get the air moving again. Uh, we also found with the laser particle counter that there was a real um, dust problem in the air. Um, that needs to be addressed through HEPA filtration. Thanks for being with us today, Frank. You're always a great source of information. Great, thanks for having me. And for more information and for the results of our lab testing on the mold and the VOCs, volatile organic compounds, visit naturallysavvy.com and read our full article on sick buildings and indoor air quality. Thanks for watching.